Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave, it's Gem here and I have been working on my little bathroom in the house since we moved in February and things have been quite slow because of lockdown but I did mention in a previous video that I was going to get your input on a painting for said bathroom. Unfortunately, Mr. Gem has vetoed that because he didn't want to end up with a pink elephant or something on the wall. So unfortunately, we are not going to get to vote on what to paint for my bathroom. But we do still need a painting for that room. So today I am going to bring you along with me as we do not one but three smaller paintings using acrylic paint to go in our bathroom and when we're all done we shall take a little look around and you can see them where they are going to live on the wall. So we'll get to top down view and we can get going. I posted on Instagram last week uh, some of these little drawings of succulents that I'd done and I used some graphite tint pencils for those and that was kind of the starting point for what we're going to do today and you can see there are three and we're going to be painting on three canvases. These are inspired by these cute little succulent plants that I have dotted about. Some of them are in the bathroom where these paintings are going and they're just absolutely adorable and they make me really happy. So what I want to do today is try and capture some of the brighter colours. So I'm just going to pop these off shot. They are going to be sitting in front of me because I'm going to use them to help me sketch out what we are trying to achieve. And the canvases that I'm using today are these little cheap canvases from Flying Tiger, which is one of my favourite shops. They do have really cheap art supplies and some of the stuff's pretty good and um, this is what they look like in the wrapper so I've got two of these little square ones and then I've got this rectangular one so they're going to sit in this sort of formation so conveniently just next to where I'm working I have my Prismacolor pencils out and it just so happens that I've got a moss green and uh, a grey pencil so that kind of makes sense for me for doing the underdrawing so we want this very very light but we have to be able to see where we're where we want to work and it's important to try and get that established so that when you start to paint you're fairly confident about where you're going and i'm going to start to get the edges of the plant and again i don't have to put in all the detail because we do want the paintbrush to be doing most of the work but if you've got an idea of roughly where things are going that's really helpful. So there we go, we'll just pencil that in very, 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 very subtly. So this is canvas number two and I'm just doing exactly the same thing again. And by having these outlines, what it does, certainly for me anyway, is that when it comes to start using the paint, I'm a lot more confident with my brush strokes and where I want to be going in. And it also helps with positioning as well, which is something that I'm trying to work on because I have this terrible habit of uh, having you know, like a big gap at the bottom and then I'm having to squish the top part of the art up to you know so that it fits in so this is really really important now my cast shadow is going in the opposite direction to this uh, the first one that we did and the reason for that is where these are going to hang in my little bathroom is opposite two windows there's two little tiny windows so I want to give the impression that the light source is coming from the window and obviously these are either side so I'm hoping that that's like a subtle thing that nobody will really notice but you guys know about it because I've told you so that's quite cool but I don't think it's something that anyone would pay attention to unless they were really looking so this one's going to be a much taller one and uh, I want the leaves to be quite a large portion of this this picture and again it's really just an outline more than anything voila and that is us we are ready to start painting so the first thing we want to do is get a base coat of paint down on each of these three canvases and I basically want to just split that up into the pots and then the actual greenery if you like and one of the challenges that I've given myself, because we all know I like a challenge, is the colour of the pots. I want to try and match up as best I can with the actual paint that I've used on the walls in the bathroom. So this is the colour and it is Denim Drift by Dulux and it's a, a rather attractive shade of a sort of bluey grey and... Uh, I did think about using this paint directly on the canvas but it is very very matte and I did try and it doesn't really like sticking to the canvas so I figured I need to up my paint mixing skills anyway because it's something I'm not that skilled at as I say I am not a painter so we're going to try and match this as closely as we can using acrylic paint instead. 
so in my head my thoughts are I may have to pop a bit of Prussian blue in this somewhere with some white and maybe a little smidge of black. I will need to wait and see how we are for, uh, you know, how warm or cool it looks. So I do have some white left over from something else in this little, uh, this is it's actually a toddler bowl and obviously I have no toddlers so I figured this is the, the next best use for it but not to be outdone and we'll see how things go. So I'm going to grab quite a lot of this white. Let's um, let's plonk some of this in here and I'll start by making like a grey colour. I think that's probably enough. Okay, so straight away I know that I need more white. We can see how this goes. Now the Prussian blue is quite dark. Oh, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> Too late, I've done it now. Hmm, that's fairly close but I'm not actually mixed in properly. I think, I think we can uh, maybe put this down to do <laughs> beginner's luck. That's that's fairly close actually. I'm quite impressed with that. I am going to need a lot more paint than this though. So the problem is now mixing up these quantities so that we have the right amount of everything. It's maybe a little bit on the blue side, but I'm not I'm not upset about that if I'm honest. The actual section of the wall where these paintings are going on won't be this colour. The part of the wall where these are going to be hung up is white. So I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. And I literally just want to get like a basic layer of paint. Now obviously with the with the acrylic paint it is fairly opaque. So we're going to be putting a lot of tones and things over the top of this. This really is just a base colour and I kind of think about it like when I am colouring. I always put a really light layer of, of colour down across the entire area and it's really just to put right in my mind where things are going to be, you know, like the positioning of the colour and I can start to build up an idea in my head about where I want the darker and the lighter parts to be. So this is kind of the same thing for me. And I don't know if this is a right way or wrong way to do things, but it seems to make sense in my head. So that is why I'm going to just go for it and do this. The good thing as well is if you make a monumental mistake, you can just paint over it. So there's no, uh, there's no real pressure there that if something goes wrong, then you're stuck with it. Okay, so we have our first pot. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other two as well. Okay, so that's us. We've got our three pots now and I want to start thinking about the greenery portion and one of the things I want to do is I really want to catch some of these colours that are in this little pot here. So my thinking behind that was that we would have one with sort of reddish tones in it, which is going to be this big tall one. And we'll one have, have one that's more sort of yellowy greens and then one that's more sort of turquoisey bluey greens. So we want to mix up three lots of green for this base layer of paint and really get the shape of these leaves on the go before we start making any sort of fancy moves. So I've got some olive green here and I've also got a phthalo green, which obviously seems like a, like a good starting point to try and work out some colours. So I'm thinking the phthalo green, just because of the nature of the colour that it is, it does have more of a bluey hue to it. I figured that would be good for our sort of blue green toned one. It is quite dark so what I want to do is just add a little bit of white to it to make it a wee bit paler. Because what we want to do is this sort of idea we want to use for the darker areas, you know, if we've got some shadow areas, that kind of thing. So we're almost at like a minty green. We don't want it that pale though. Make sure that it's mixed really well as well. So I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush now. This is a number three. 
and we just want to start painting in our leaves. So all I'm really doing here is following the outline of my, my pencil strokes that I did earlier and just get this colour down and sort of fill in the gaps. Now really what I'm doing here is just this sort of base shape. I will want to add some more leaves in. So I'm kind of trying to think of this just as like the outline, so to speak, because we will be able to tuck some more in in behind and also put some more in front. But we can do that once the paint is dry and we can just do it as another layer. I just feel he's looking a bit bald in the middle. So I can just work between the lines that I've already got and just add some in, in between the, the little gaps. So again, I'm just following my pencil lines there. Now ideally you could do this with a, a smaller brush, but I'm just using this one because it's the one that I've been using before. So we're gonna leave that to dry now and I'll probably come back to this like maybe tomorrow. Make sure it's completely dry before we start putting anything in over the top. So the next thing we want to look at is making up a more sort of yellowish green. So again, the first thing I want to do, I think, I think, is add in a little bit of white. And just see what that's going to look like. Oh, that's nice. I like this colour. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Now straight away I'm thinking to myself that this would look really good on our tall plant without adding any yellow to it. So this is going to be the one that's going to have like the red hues in with it and I think that that's going to be pretty good so I think I'm going to go with that for this one so let's try that here oh so these ones seem to have when I was doing the initial sketch of this they seem to have much broader leaves and although they still come to a point the point isn't as pointy <laughs> Oh my goodness, as some of the other ones, you know, it's it's got quite a sort of rounded tip on it rather than a, you know, a straight sort of jaggy point as we should, <laughs> jaggy point. I know what I mean, okay? I think we'll have a big broad one. So this is kind of like facing us. See? These ones are maybe more sort of side on and this one's looking at us. All right, and so for this third one, we want a more yellowish green. I'll just do a little bit of experimenting here. I'm gonna take some of this olive over here because I don't want to waste it. And I'm gonna take some lemon yellow and I just want to see what happens. This is this really is an experiment for me. There's, uh, I'm not, not pretending I know what I'm doing here because I really don't, but I just want to see what happens because I'm curious like that. If I stick in some of this. I might have to partition this off because that's a little bit too much green. And then just swish some of this about and and see what kind of colour. Oh yeah, that's kind of what I was aiming for, like almost like a lime green. Maybe a bit yellow-er than that. There's that word again. That's maybe a bit too lime, lime green. And that's one of the really nice things about doing these paintings. You know, you can you can build up so many layers of colour and what you've actually put down as your base colour, you know, your, your final product could end up not looking anything like it if you don't want it to just because you've put layers and layers on top of it. And I really like that about acrylic. Okay, yeah, I think I'm a bit happier with that. That's a kind of like a chartreuse type colour. I've got a bit more paint now as well, which is good. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. I think I'm quite happy with that. So I can give myself a rough idea of where things are happening just by how, you know, how I express these brush strokes, which is quite handy. It's a rather jolly shade of green, this. I actually lived in a house once and um, the it was a rented accommodation. And I was told by the uh, the landlord that the previous tenants had just freshly redecorated, you know, the, the downstairs area. So I thought, oh, that's great. The place is going to be nice and fresh. And I walked in through the front door and the entry hallway, which is the same hallway that carried up the stairs, you know, the, the stairs came straight off that entry hallway. And the entire thing from top to bottom was like this colour of green. And you know, you know me, I like a good green, but my goodness, and I thought, oh no, that has to go. So uh, yeah, needless to say, their taste and decor 
much as they had freshened the place up and you could tell that the paintwork was fresh, the first thing I did <laughs> was paint over it all and I was so satisfied. See, when I had got rid of every ounce of lime green in that hallway, that was such, such a good moment. I was so satisfied. <laughs> that last stroke of paint, which was that awkward bit above your stairs that nobody can reach. I was in there with my paintbrush. I was like, yes. I was recovering from surgery at that point as well. I shouldn't even have been up a ladder and that's how bad it was. That's how badly I wanted rid of it. Um, Mr. Jem was still working down in England. He was finishing out his contract. So, yeah, I was on my own and uh, I really wasn't supposed to be doing things like that, but I had to do it. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't watch this like this. Okay, so I'm just adding a bit more paint in and really this is just indicators for later on. Okay, so there we have our three base paintings. All I've got to do is add in the little back parts, the pots, and then I'm going to leave these to dry overnight and we're going to come back to this and really start painting properly, as I would say. Okay, so these are all dry now and I've got my nice base layers on. What I have been trying to do here, I'm kind of like in between tasks, so I'm trying to juggle everything. I've tried to make a slightly darker version of what we've got going on here and I am going to use that for the starting to get some shadow and things in. We want to do some of that. Now what I have to bear in mind here is that this one is going to have like a dead on light source. This was the conversation about going back to the windows. <laughs> this one has got the light source going slightly in that direction and this one in this direction. So I'm going to keep them in this orientation. The center one is probably going to be the easiest to do because this is going to be quite uniform on both sides assuming that the pot is symmetrical and the light source is more or less in the middle. You guys can just see that and no more that's cool. I'm actually standing up to do this. I hardly ever stand up but I'm figuring because I'm going to be back and forth waiting on layers of paint and things drying and I'm jumping between three pictures it's just slightly easier. I am uh, I'm having a bit of a multitask today on account of uh, my name's Gem and I'm always busy. <laughs> Maybe I should change the introduction on the start of all the videos. Welcome to the colour cave, my name's Gem and I'm always busy. <laughs> so I'm just going to start to get some darker paint down and I don't want to... I don't want to bring that out too far and while it's still wet I'm just mixing in a little bit of white. And it's nice I've got time to do wet and wet on these hot plants because the, you're working in quite a small area. When I was doing that big canvas, that's the last thing I painted in acrylic. You, you know, that, that look she just wasn't there at all. Anyway, so I'm trying to get the idea that there's some curvature on this. Uh, which, you know, yeah, I think we're getting there. Under here. I'd, oh, ha, ha, ha. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was an old hand injury and voluntary twitch. I was so lucky there. <laughs> Oh wow. For anybody else that suffers with um, any sort of motor skill disabilities or old injuries like me, you just got to go with it. And see if that had made a huge splodge on the canvas, I'd have just painted right over it and kept going. Okay, so let's move on to one of the other ones. Okay, so when we look at this canvas, we're kind of trying to do the same thing that's going on over here in reverse. I don't want them to be exactly the same though, because that would be boring. So you can see that these two are clearly two different plant pots, although we've used the same colours. So I want to try and do the same thing again with this, within reason. <laughs> so again, I can't really make any promises because, because, because I am not that experienced. In fact, I'm not even not that. I am not experienced with this. It generally, is the thing that seems to suffer is the consistency of your artwork. Even, even as a new artist, you can still pull some really cool stuff out the bag, but it's experience that lets you replicate that faithfully time and time again. Now, that might just be my opinion. I don't know if everyone else feels the same, but I certainly feel a whole load of ways about that because... Even when I'm drawing, now bear in mind that when I'm drawing, that's the thing that I am most comfortable doing is with a pencil. And I can draw something and think, oh yeah, that's great, that's really good. And then if I try to draw it like for like, again, it comes out completely differently. And uh, if you want to do any sort of character design or animation or anything like that, 
uh, that you know that consistency is something that you need to be able to have because you need to be able to replicate your characters. Now the other thing I want to do as well is I want to put the cast shadow in and I want it to be quite pale and watery. Okay, not the best shadow I've ever come up with, but I like the shadow in this one a lot better than this one. That'll have to do. Okay, so I've taken some of this turquoise colour and I'm just adding in some mid-tones here. They are quite difficult to see on the camera because they're quite close to this phthalo green. And the colours that I've used for that, I've just mixed some of the phthalo green with a tiny bit of this colour and then some white. And most of it's on the end of my palette knife. And I'm not even that bothered about it being completely mixed. If it's a little bit streaky, I'm kind of okay with that. And I want to add in some darker areas. So I'm just, I'm trying to look at this on the monitor because again, like I find that everything's a lot more defined for me if I look at the monitor. And it's, a, it's the same as taking a photograph of your artwork and then looking at the photograph. Or um, if you draw digitally flipping the canvas. It, this has like the same sort of effect on me and I can see where, especially when it comes to values and where the shadow and things should be, like I can see that this side needs more dark stuff on it. Maybe. Okay. I'm thinking this one's finished. I do have a bit of a, I've got a little bit of a mistake here that I want to try and correct and it's just a smudge. I don't actually think it was like a hand spasm. <sighs> Okay, it's still a little bit smudged, but it's not as obvious. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave that one at that. This is going to have a little bit of red in it. Uh, I think the Elizabeth, uh, the Elizabeth Crimson, I'm still calling it that. I think the permanent rose is going to be too rosy. It's going to be too pink. Uh, so I'm going to try a little bit of this cadmium red. And I've also got raw umber, which I think is this one. I'm going to mix these two together. So we want some red. And again, the light source is kind of like dead on with this, so not too worried about little lights in general, but I do want to get in some of this high jock, some of this red. Ooh. Now, the question is, do I want to make this more subtle with water and then mix it in with like a little bit of green? So we're gonna have a lot of red in at the bottom here. And then with this green brush. I don't think I want red on every single leaf because that would be, that would be really boring. And we don't really want that. Jock, stop scratching please. Injection's clearly not working yet. <laughs> the thing is, if you ask him nicely to stop, he stops. I think it's just distraction more than anything. I'm kind of getting the, uh, like, the plastic aquarium plant vibes from this. <laughs> that's, a, that's an insult to most people's aquarium plants, and even I know that. <laughs> I'm sorry. For those of you who are fish keepers, I am sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so I want some of the darker colour down at the bottom here. So I'm just literally taking this neat olive green, which I love, by the way. Like, I love it. Love it, love it. And I want to get a bit of texture and just a bit of depth in some of these, because that's fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so back to the same sort of situation here. I just want to put a bit of white in this. No, 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 no. That's awful. Awful. Now I wasn't really aiming for anything in particular when I decided I was painting these uh, these succulents. Um, the uh, just because that was what we decided to have in the bathroom, it seemed like a good idea. I would I should have just painted trees, really, shouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> but I thought, yeah, okay, just go for it and see if I decide I hate them or I miraculously get really good at doing acrylic painting I can take them down and I can paint something else so that was my thinking I think I may be missing a frond like I want to put in an extra one in here and I'm just going to do it in behind here and then it's going to disappear that way because it's rebellious okay you with me can you see my outline can you see where I'm going with this oh yeah okay better 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 so that means it's going to come right in there 
Okay, I think I'm a bit happier now. Yeah, let's go for that. Okay, two down, one to go. I don't want to ruin this too much. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's try. Now, that I'm, again, I'm just going to use the olive green straight over the top. Now, I do have these little lines here, and this is just to kind of help me out. The light's coming from this side, so we're going to have a lot of dark stuff going on in here and I'm just going to start over here and go for it because if I don't I'm going to deliberate it too much. Aren't you all glad you watched this video because you're just going to sit and watch me talk to myself? <laughs> yeah so this is going to be casting a shadow down in there. <sighs> I know when I'm concentrating because I start holding my breath and then I realise that I'm holding my breath and that if I keep holding my breath then that's not going to end well. So yeah, <laughs> that's how you know when I'm getting down to business. Right, this is kind of wonky here. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm assuming that that should have been part of here, like so. Yeah, I, I kind of just feels as if I'm making a mess with this now, to be honest. Mm. So let's just go with some white and let's catch some like really highlighty bits. Oh, okay. <sighs> The last thing and hopefully the most interesting thing is that I am going to use some of some of this. This is sand texture gel and it kind of does what it says in the tin. But I was thinking because we've got these little pebbles in amongst all our succulents that we could maybe try and mix this with some pale raw umber. No, not raw umber, yellow ochre. Come on. <laughs> Some yellow ochre. I don't want it to be really yellow though. And I'm loving this not quite mixed feeling I'm getting here. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh. That might be a bit much. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Oh that is quite grainy though. Okay. And you can see that it's quite grainy. Right. I am satisfied. The only thing about stuff like this is I'm kind of worried that I'm going to ruin paint brushes. See, because this is so textured, uh, like I don't really want to use a delicate little brush, but it's too small a space for a palette knife. I think what I'll do is I'm going to use this. Uh, this is a Windsor & Newton foundation brush, so this is like their beginner's brushes. Anyway, this Filbert brush has got quite stiff bristles on it, so I feel like it's going to... It's going to like be able to handle it a bit better. But it might be too big to get in the space. It's going to be too big. Anyway, I'm going to try and dab this on. Can you see that? <laughs> now see, I kind of want a little bit more of the raw umber in at this side because it's in the shadow. Oh, no. That looks okay. Okay, last one. Okay, right, that's it. I am done. I am calling it quits. <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel about these? <laughs> these, I'm actually, I'm reasonably pleased. They've turned out okay. Um, uh, I'm just really enjoying exploring this whole acrylic situation because it's something that's really new to me. And I kind of wish I'd done little canvases like this before I went and did that great big seascape. But I think I probably, that baptism of fire did me reasonably well. And uh, yeah, these are these are just fun. I mean, they're not masterpieces and I'm perfectly aware of that. But you can tell that they're plants and they're going to go up in the bathroom and, you know, they'll be okay in there. I hope this has inspired you to paint something for your house or even to just try some little diddly acrylic canvases because they're great fun. And we shall see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. So thanks very much for coming and hanging out with me. I appreciate the support. As always, if you've made it this far, you've obviously enjoyed the video. So if you could stop for a second to give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate the support. Bye for now, guys. Take it easy and keep safe.